Good afternoon. I'm very honored to be here you know, to talk about you know, my experience at Alibaba in the last 10 years. And I was joined Alibaba in 2008. And uh, probably, you know, most of you don't know, actually, I was a professor in the university for 10 years. And actually, I'm a psychology professor, okay. And uh, I was a professor, uh, I was a chairman uh, at Hangzhou University as a, in, the, in the psychology department. And then I left the university, joined the Microsoft Research uh, in Beijing. So I spent 10 years at Microsoft Research doing all the research on the tablet PC and all the big data things. And uh, 10 years ago, you know, I, because I was born in Hangzhou, just like Jack Ma, so I really want to go back, went back to my hometown. So then I decided to join the Alibaba. At that time, actually, Alibaba was, was relatively small, I would say that. And uh, just like a few weeks after I decided to join Alibaba in 2008, actually, Jack Ma uh, wrote a, a letter to public, to public. The letter, the title of the letter basically says it's the, it's the worst time for the internet company, something like that, okay. So I called Jack to see whether I should join the Alibaba or not. And, uh, and, 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 and what he talked to me is basically, if you like us, just join us. So it's not really, it's not really about you know, whether there's opportunity, opportunity for, the, for the particular things. It's really about you choose to work with some people you really want to work with them. So that's my first experience at Alibaba. And uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, the three personal experiences that I had uh, at Alibaba in the last 10 years. They actually go beyond the Alibaba cloud. But the cloud is certainly the one of the, the first thing I want to talk about. So when I joined Alibaba cloud, Alibaba, actually at that time, thinking about 10 years ago, the challenge is not something that's difficult. It's, a, it's really something we don't know what it is, okay. So at that time, you know, cloud is a buzzword. Even today, actually, for most of people, cloud is still the buzzword, okay. But uh, 10 years ago, it's really just a word. And personally, I told Jack, I don't like the word called cloud computing. Actually, it's more like, uh, I would say, if you're thinking about the GE, you know, general electricity, general electrics, okay. So, the best word to describe cloud today is more like general computing instead of cloud computing. It really tells people computing is going to be, is going to be everywhere, just like uh, electricity you have today. So computing not necessarily have to be in a box or PC. It could be anywhere you can imagine. So at that time, I would like to have a company called uh, General Computing. But uh, thinking about uh, 10 years ago, if you start a company called General Computing, nobody would believe you, okay? <laughs> so then I said, okay, I'll take the word, actually, I don't like that word called cloud computing. So that's why we started this cloud computing company. And uh, so start something nobody really knows is hard. But even more hard is really convince the people to start to do that. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very different from uh, a typical startup you know, company. Because when you have a startup company, you have to tell the people what I want to do and how can you reach that. But at that time, you even don't know what you want to do, not mentioning actually how to get there, OK? But the only vision that I have, to have is the, co the computing is going to be everywhere. The co computing is going to be delivered through the internet instead of a box or PC. You know, the last era is really about, you know, deliver the computing power to every home through a box of PC. That's the vision of Microsoft, okay. But uh, by the time of the internet and the whole computing industry, I'm not saying the internet industry, I'm talking about the computing industry, is actually a kind of get lost. So what's the, what's the next thing that we can do? So the Alibaba is very lucky that at that time we realized how important for the, for the rest of the world in the internet era, the computing should be delivered through the internet instead of traditional devices. 
So that's really how we get started is Alibaba Cloud. So we are very lucky, you know, at, at Alibaba, we are the very few company we realized at that time the computing is important. Particularly, we realized at that time, thinking about 10 years ago, not today, OK, we know that data is important. So even six years ago, I did an interview with the uh, economist. And they asked me about you know, how Alibaba is thinking about the, uh, the data. So I basically told him that actually eight years ago, two years after I joined the Alibaba, we did a strategic conference. At that time, then we decided two things. That very close, the, th that's two things. The first is certainly we believe that actually computing is going to be a utility, just like electricity. The second is that we decide, we, we, we had a conclusion that Alibaba is the big company. You probably know this from Jack's talk, talking about you know, Alibaba is a big company. But thinking about, and again, eight years ago, we have an internal meeting, and we have this conclusion. So, so the thing that I want to emphasize is we always say, is, OK, vision is important. But I would say, I would add is, what I want to add is, your vision is important. OK, you want to make sure you have your own view about what's the future of the world instead of just to follow other people's vision. And uh, I think you have to believe that your personal view about the world, that you could make it happen. That's what I learned that for when I started this, the Alibaba Cloud Computing. The second thing that actually is, is interesting that to share with you is really about the people, about the young people. I see a lot of young people over here. And uh, when I started this, when I founded this, Alibaba Cloud, the first thing I should do is find the people. So I spent a week in the Silicon Valley, talked to a lot of my friends over there. And, uh, and we counted the people that could do the cloud at that time. And our conclusion is that, OK, the, the, the really qualified people at that time that could do a good system for the cloud computing, probably less than 100, less than 100 at that time in the world. And then the, then the question is how you can get this, how to get these people. And it's hard. Particularly at that time, you know, again, the Alibaba was relatively small at that time. So then I made a very different decision is to get the young people. The people, they don't have experience in the cloud, OK. In standoff, you get the people that already did something they call the cloud computing, OK. So I, I got the people. A group of people, actually, their age is at least 20 years younger than me. And from a very core team to start all the technology. So I'm really excited about that because for me, it's, it's, it's more like an a, a, a adventure when I was very young, OK? And working with these young people. And it's, it's a miracle, you know, five years later. And these young group of people actually built the best system around the world. So today, there's many cloud computing company around the world, OK? But I want to say that Alibaba is one of the three companies that its own home developer, system, home developer system to support their cloud business, OK? And uh, certainly, the Amazon is one of them, and the Microsoft, and then Alibaba. So it is, and, the, and the difference is the our cloud platform actually are developed by all the young people. These people never, never experience work with other big company. So Alibaba is the company they get their first hand experience in this, you know, world class, you know, competition, whatever you can call it. So I think Alibaba is in other way, you know provide a platform for the young people. Their, their, first, their first experience in their work, they did, they did something that most of people, only like senior people could do that. So I'm very proud to you know, bring all these young people there. So today, some of them actually, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, that left the, 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 the Alibaba cloud and started their own, own a startup company. And they are very, they are very successful. At least a few of the uh, artificial intelligence comp company in China 
actually funded by former employee of uh, Ali Cloud. So it's kind of very interesting, you know, they work in a big company and they left and start with their own uh, 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 business. But I would say, Alibaba, what I learned from Alibaba is really the young people could do some great things. Instead of you have looking for the senior people. So that's the second experience with, with the cloud. The last thing that I want to uh, share with you is really about the customer. And uh, you know, when I started uh, Alibaba Cloud, and the first question I have, who is going to use us? Who is going to use this technology? Okay. So today, probably big companies start to use in the cloud. But at the early days, and nobody believed that's, that's safe, that's reliable enough, and that's the future. And uh, I'm very lucky, actually, to get to know a very, you know, very, sm very, very different you know, startup company in China. And it's a small company. They even don't have the money to get a space from the data center. So all the server, they just put their, their, their you know, their either the DOM or whatever they can find space. They just put their server over there. So it's interesting, you know, the, you, have, you, have you have chance to use a technology to help these people. They don't have the money to get the space from traditional data center. And what they are looking for is something what we call cloud computing today. So again, you may realize that actually get some space from this center is not cloud computing, okay. And uh, so I'm very lucky to, to, to get to know a lot of the people. And uh, today, most of them are very successful in terms of the business. But at that time, the only blocking issue, I would say, the only blocking issue is they don't have enough computing power to support business. And they don't have the money to buy the space from the data center. But they, so that's why, you know, with our cloud, then everybody could enter into a business that computing power is not a barrier for them. That's really what we want to do. Again, uh, the best example for me, for all the startups here, you know, one of the story you must know about AlphaGo, okay, it's really about the Go games. But there's a one misperception about these events. And uh, a lot of people think, particularly from the media, this is something that only big company can do. Only company like Google. But actually it's not. Actually it's not. The computing power that AlphaGo needs, you can get from a cloud at affordable cost. That's the key. That's different from 20 years ago. That's the, that's the time for the uh, deep blue. In, the, in that time, you know, Deep Blue, the machine like Deep Blue can only be owned by the company like IBM. Small company startup, you know, even though they have the idea, but they don't have the computing power to expand the idea. But the cloud changes that. So I would say everybody here, you do have the chance to develop a system just like AlphaGo. And because the computing power is not a barrier for us, OK. So most of them, when I give a talk, I always say the media actually the misleading the story of AlphaGo. The really the story of AlphaGo is everybody can do that. Not only Google or big company can do that. So that's why you know, I want to share the second story that I have with the, with the, uh, uh, within the uh, Alibaba. You know, if you're thinking about Alibaba Cloud, is a business company. It's a, it's a, it's really about a, 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 a commercial things. Okay, then at Alibaba, I start the events. What I call the 2050. Okay, it's really a non-profit uh, 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 effort. The the reason I want to do that, you know, again, I see that the young people really need some of kind of help. It's, it's most of them. It's not real money. It's really want to make sure they understand they can do a lot of things they can do. Okay, so I organized the conference uh, uh, with my own foundation, just to bring all the people, young people together, and let people to see other people what they do, and they probably could 
feel that actually, why not? Why I can't do that? So with this 2050 conference last year, I bring a very small startup, only have about 50 people. And they develop a very good Go program. Again, a company with 50 people, but only like five, five or six people working on this program. OK. And they are not using GPUs, OK. They are not using a, NVIDIA GPUs. They just use the CPUs. All the things look very preliminary, but they did develop a world-class Go program that can compete with the AlphaGo. So they bring a champion from Korea. That's actually the number one champion in the Go at that time. So that program actually beat that. It's very exciting. No? It's only like a, you know, a company with 50 people. They only, only have six people working on that. They did build the best Go program to do that. And uh, so that's why I say everybody could do that. But uh, one more thing they did the best, actually better than AlphaGo, is, you know, if you look at uh, what, what people tell you through AlphaGo, so the media tried to tell you, OK, it's the time machine beats the human, OK. But actually, that's not the story. And, uh, and uh, thinking about, you know, when AlphaGo, you know, be the human champion. Actually, the number of the people, young people, who start to play the Go game in China actually increased. So even though the machine beat the human, but the more people want to play the Go, OK. But you know, what's the pain for the young people, especially for the kids? It's, uh, there's a never, never had a chance for the kids to play with the world champion. Never, never. But every young kid, they want to play the Go with the world champion. So during the 2050, and we set up in a, in a room, so every young pe the kids actually could come and play with the world champion, certainly runs by machine, OK? And so it's really giving the people something they never had before. It's not just the beat the human, OK? So I was the, a big company like Google, we view the technology different from a startup, even though they same technology. And uh, even more interesting, you know, during these events, we did uh, this is the first time in the, in the history uh, of Go. And, uh, and we set up a system. And it's certainly cert certified by the Go Association in China. And uh, if a kid comes and they play with the machine, and you can get the certificate. And this never happened before. So it's, uh, it's a human, just a very good relationship with the, with the human instead of you know, just competing with each other. So that's the, that's the story. So uh, the story of AlphaGo is a story a big company brings to you. But I will say the story I just told during the 2050 is a story, you know, brought by a Starbucks, okay. So, but I like the story from Starbucks instead of a big company. So, thinking about, you know, that's, uh, that's really a lot of things you can do. You can, you know, even with the, for me, you can do a great things for business. You can, you can also do a great things, you know, in a non-profit way. And uh, then I want to share the third thing that I, experience that I had at Alibaba, uh, talking about this Go program. And uh, probably the one of story you may not know is, even today, Google don't know how to use the technology they developed from AlphaGo for their business, okay? They, still, they are still very frustrated to figure out how can you use that store, the technology for their business, okay? But uh, interesting enough, you know, I started on a, on a project or whatever you call it in Hangzhou with the local governor called the City Brain. I see in a smart city uh, uh, a demo in this, uh, in this conference. But I started this uh, City Brain project. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's, not in a, it's not just in a commercial business. It's also it's not in a non-profit uh, uh, effort. But uh, City Brain is really in a, in a, in a project we combine the, 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 the effort from the government 
and the companies and also nonprofit organization. So I'm very lucky, you know, I get involved, I start this project. So I talked to the Hangzhou government and uh, they are very uh, exciting to start this city brain project uh, in Hangzhou. So let me just spend a minute talking about what is city brain. So thinking about, you know, people never realize, you know, we have a traffic problem. We never know what's really the reason behind that. And the reason behind that is very simple. It's not a traffic problem. It's basically the city don't have the result to support all the cars. So what's the resource? There's two resources for the traffic. One is the space, that's the road. A second is the time. That's, so basically all the traffic lights really uh, control how to use the time, you know, resource within the city, okay. So all the traffic problem that comes from the efficient use of space, that's the road, and the efficient use of the traffic lights, okay. That, that's pretty much the, the reason. And uh, so city bridge really is a new infrastructure. We want to make sure the city could best use all the resources the city has, okay. And the traffic is just one of them. Thinking about everything that in the city is about resources, your water supply, your electricity, even the, uh, everything is thinking about that. So let, let me give you why that actually the, the, the space and time is important for traffic. I'll just give you one example. Even though there's a no traffic problem, you still waste your time, okay? You still waste your time. So what we did is make sure we have the technology to best use the time to control the traffic lights, so to ease the, 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 the traffic problem. So I started that. And the interesting is, the gold technology I mentioned that from the, the startup company, they actually be successfully used for the city brain project, okay. And that's the first time actually, the people use the artificial intelligence technology at the city level. No, we all know the artificial intelligence is used like a face recognition of things, but this is really at very micro level use of artificial intelligence. But uh, optimize the whole city's traffic is really about the intelligence of the city, okay? It's uh, not a local optimization. So I'm very happy that actually just by using this technology, we increase the speed of the car, the speed of traffic in Hanzhou. At the minimum, it's about 15 to 20%. At some really congested area, we speed up to the 50% without any additional resource. So that's probably the three story that I have that I will share with you that actually we can do today. Even the private sector, the non-profit non organization things, and also how to work with government. There's a lot of challenges that in our city that means there's a lot of opportunity, even more than 10 years ago that I started the Alibaba Cloud. So I'm very happy to, to take some a few questions that if you have, okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Wang, for your insightful sharing. And because we have received a number of questions through the QR code, but due to time constraint, maybe I can just only one, one, one of the question out of more than 20 questions. Okay, I just randomly choose one. Okay, Dr. Wang, 10 years ago, you know the power of cloud. As of today, what do you think will be the most powerful thing in 2030? Wow. Uh, I think it is, is still the computing. So cloud computing is just the one form of the computing. So I would say the next 100 years, it was very exciting because computing is going to be everywhere. So thinking about the last 20 or in the last two or 300 years, we are actually in the same era. That's what I call the horsepower era. It's basically, we got steam engine, we got electricity, we got everything, but it's a horsepower thing, okay. And the horsepower basically means we get more from the earth. We can, we can get more resources from the earth. But with the computing power, we basically, we're thinking about, help us thinking about how we can spend every drop of the water. We were thinking about everything we spend. We, we have to compute everything we spend. So for the next 100 years, we still be the computing. We're going to have the 
next 100 years will be, I would say, will be in a computing century. That's going to change everything. Again, it's not a computer century, OK? It's a computing century. It's going to be everywhere. So we go from computer and the cloud computing, which is mobile. It's all about the, the computing. So my friend, one of my friends tells me it's very exciting. By 2050, that's why I found this event. By 2050, it's the time you could put a quantum computer in your pocket. So thinking about today, you've got the mobile phone in your pocket, you've got big change. But uh, by the 2050, you're going to have a quantum computer in your pocket. That's very exciting. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Wang. Please give a big round of applause to Dr. Wang. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed.